Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back, everybody. Hope you are all doing very well. My name is Andy with Boatworks today. And last week, as you saw, I kind of got my ass handed to me with the epoxy layup that I was trying to do on this transom. Now, this week, I've since corrected that. And showing that I don't think is going to be overall very interesting or very helpful. But what I do think will be very helpful is going over the five things that I did differently this week compared to last that made a night and day difference. So with that said, let's get started. So the first tip I want to mention isn't so much something that I did differently this week compared to last, but I, it is still worth mentioning. Now, when you're working with epoxy, basically as soon as you start adding your hardener, that clock is ticking. You only have a certain amount of time given the temperatures that you're working in, you only have a certain amount of time to work with that material before it starts to set up on you. So tip number one, use the slowest hardener that you can that will still work with the temperatures that you're in. So for example, I keep my shop at 63 degrees and th last week, as well as this week, I used uh, the Total Boat, it's their slow hardener. The, now they also make a fast, but I use their slow hardener just for the simple fact that it will give me a longer working time. Now, let's just say that I'm working in, 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 uh, in temperatures that are less than 60 degrees. Offhand, I don't know exactly what the, where the cutoff is temperature-wise for using their slow hardener. I want to say it's probably around 60 degrees. So if you're going to be in temperatures lower than that, well then absolutely you're going to want to use their fast hardener. But if you're in 60 degrees or warmer, I highly, highly recommend that you use their slow hardener just so that you get that extra working time that you may or may not need. And tip number two is limit the size of the batch of, of material that you're working with. Now this is something that I did differently this week compared to last. Uh, last week I was trying to work with 24 ounce batches and while that gave me all the material that I needed to cover both corners of this transom, because of the size of that batch and how much time it took to mix in the additives, you know, the, uh, the, the milled fibers as well as the silica, specifically the silica, I ran out of time. Uh, the material was starting to get warm on me and heat up before I was able to get all of the additives in that I needed. So that was last week. This week I limited all my batch sizes to 12 ounces, eight, yeah, 12, <laughs> to 12 ounce batches, so half the size. And at the end of the day, what it came down to is I used for that batch of basically half the size, I still used the same amount of silica that I had in last week's batch. And, well, surprise, surprise, it actually worked this weekend. Now, because I used that smaller batch size, it, was, it took less time to get that silica incorporated into the epoxy mixture. And because I was working with a smaller volume of epoxy this week compared to last, there was less, I guess, thickness of the, of the mixture sitting in the bucket. Now, the thicker the mixture, the faster it starts to want to set up on you just because it creates its own heat. Heat cr accelerates that, uh, that curing process. So having less, uh, half of the volume, in theory, gave me almost twice the amount of working time before it started to get warm in the pot. So tip number two, limit the size of the batches that you're working with. If you have to mix up multiple batches, that's better than doing one large batch and having it go sideways on you like it did last week. It's a waste of time and it's a waste of money. So tip number three is actually the one that I think it made the largest difference for me this week compared to last. Now, la last week, I didn't do anything special with the resins. Uh, I just poured it out of the bottle and you know, started working with it. Now, when you're talking about resins, the viscosity of them are go is going to be thicker when it's cold compared to when it's warm. Now, again, like I said, I didn't do anything special with the resins last week, so it was right off the bat, it was thicker than what, I, than what it actually was, uh, if that makes any sense. So, for example, uh, I was incorporating my fillers, and it got to the point where it felt like, you know, it, it might work. You know, I, I, didn't, I knew I was going to be a little bit shy, but uh, it felt like, well, you know, there's a 50-50 chance that this may actually work. Well, what happened is that as that resin started to cure, during that curing process, it creates heat. Now, because that resin was warming up, all of a sudden now the viscosity of that resin changed. So it went from you know, being fairly thick to barely even being thick, which is why it Niagara falled on me uh, after about 15 minutes after layup. So this week what I did differently is I, normally I have like heating pads, electric heating pads or heating blankets, whatever you want to call them, 
And I'll put my resin on top of there and just kind of let them warm up for three, four hours before I'm actually going to need them. Well, I looked around the shop here for quite a while. I still have a lot of crap in boxes from the, from the moving process. I couldn't find them. And then yeah, something that dawned on me as I'm like, hey, wait a minute. I've got hot water baseboard registers here, you know, and that's the heating for this shop. So before I closed up uh, that first night, I basically took the hardener and the resin, set them on top of one of the heating registers, and just let them sit there overnight. And that made a night and day difference. It made mixing in the, the additives, the silica, way easier. It just, the, the resin just took the silica much faster, which, you know, again, a lot of these things are kind of intertwined. Um, but I would say if I had to nail down one change this week that I did differently compared to last, that is pre-warming your resins and let it warm overnight, two, three, four hours. You want that resin to be toasty warm. Now the flip side of that is that because you're already starting with a warm resin, that kind of already sets you behind the eight ball a little bit as far as the working time that you're going to have. But between uh, the, you know, the ease of being able to work with it, get your additives mixed in faster, it just it worked out. And again, this kind of plays off of tip number two, or I think it was number two, which is limiting your batch sizes. If you kind of take these tips and, and understand how they all kind of play together, it will make a world of difference in how your, progress, or how your project goes. So tip number three, preheat your resin if it's a little on the chilly side. Now tip number four is one that some might find a little controversial, but it's really not and that is pre-thickening your resin before you add the hardener. Now, I'm not saying pre-thicken it to the point where it's like paste, uh, but you can get a, a bit of a head, or a head start on the thickening process before you add the hardener. And I guess uh, what I would say is once you, once you get it to the point of maybe like pudding consistency, you know, like soft pudding, <laughs> that's probably about as far as you're going to want to pre-thicken it before you add your hardener. Uh, and if you take it, you know, too much, you know, beyond that point, then you might have a hard time you know, getting the, the hardener fully incorporated into the resin. But if you can pre, but if you pre-thicken that even halfway to where it needs to be, you know, as, as a finished thickness, you just saved half of your working time after the hardener has been added. So that is uh, another big time-saving tip. Now again, I can't stress this enough. Don't, you don't want to thicken it up to the finished thickness. Get it about halfway, and then you can add your hardener, and then you can finish off you know, adding the rest of your additives to get it to where it needs to be. And tip number five comes in after you've added your hardener and you've mixed it up to what you think is going to be, I, I guess, the finished thickness that you need. And that is, after you've got it to that point, let it sit in the bucket for about a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, uh, or until you can feel the bottom of the bucket is just starting to warm up. Once it gets to that point, give it another stir to see if the viscosity of that batch has changed. Because again, as the resin is warming, it's going to want to, I guess, become a little bit more thin. So let it, once you start to feel a little bit of heat on the bottom of the bucket, give it a mix. If it seems like it thinned out, add in another scoop or two of, of your silica or whatever you know, hardeners you happen to be, or not hardeners, additives you happen to be working with. Give that a final stir and then basically Johnny on the spot, get that stuff on the surface or at least out of the bucket at the very least. Uh, you know, if you're working with small batches, which I highly recommend, uh, you, you should be able to get all the contents that's in that mix bucket out on the surface. It doesn't have to be spread out and look nice. It just needs to be spread out. But if you can get that out of the bucket and on the surface as quickly as you can, you will have a lot, you'll have plenty of working time. Uh, if, if it's going to be kind of an awkward situation where it's going to take you a little bit of time to maneuver yourself uh, to actually get to the location where you need to apply this material, try spreading, ta taking the, uh, the, the mixture and just spreading it out on something flat, like a board that's wrapped in plastic or something. Uh, the name of the game is just trying to get the thickness of that epoxy mix thin. Uh, however you do it, it doesn't matter. Uh, once you, but once you do that, you will greatly extend the working time. Even though it was starting to get a little bit of warm, uh, even though it was starting to warm up a little bit in the mix bucket, once you get it thin, you're going to have plenty of working time to do what you need to do with it. So kind of a quick one this week, but I think the information is going to prove to be very helpful to a lot of folks, especially now, this time of year. Holidays are behind us, and mentality-wise, people have already kind of switched gears, and they're already thinking about spring. 
Uh, that's something I've noticed with the amount of uh, emails that I'm getting, as well as the folks over on Patreon. They're a little bit more active uh, now, which is, which is excellent. Uh, nobody wants to be you know, still working on their boat come Memorial Day. You want to be done and out and outside having fun. So with that said, uh, I, I don't bring this up very often, but if you are going to be looking at a project uh, that you're going to be facing between now and spring, and you're not quite sure you know, what kind of resins to use, how to use them, that kind of thing, I do have a guide. It's a download guide available. I'll have a link down below. If, you're, if that's something that you think would be helpful for, to you, by all means, have a mean, uh, you know, check it out. Uh, if you think you got a handle on it, that's awesome. And one last thing, again, I, don't ever, I rarely bring this up, uh, but if you are going to be going into a project uh, and you're not real comfortable with, uh, I guess, the steps or the materials or the process, that kind of thing, I do consulting, uh, I do all my consulting stuff through Patreon. So if you would like to basically get together for you know, emails or video chats once a week or every, uh, you know, or once a month, uh, there are different levels there that you can check out. Uh, if that's something you think would be helpful, uh, by all means, check it out. Again, I'll have links down below. And, and again, if you have a good feel on it and you're comfortable with what you have ahead of you, that's awesome. Then I'm, you know, the videos are doing their job. So with that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. So I, as always, I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I really appreciate that. That does help. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave those down below. I'll do my best to get back with you. And as always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. And I'll see you next Sunday. This has been a Boatworks Today Projection.